not sure who first observed history is written by the winners, but it was Winston Churchill who said, history will be kind to me, for I intend to write it. Either set of it, of course, is dependent on the idea that one has succeeded, either as history maker or history chronicler. Yet in our fourth story on the countdown, again today, George W. Bush indicated he is trying to write the history, even though in all of its battles, save for a couple of dubious elections, he has not won a damned thing. In a flurry of TV interviews and speeches, Bush is systematically trying to rewrite his own history or have others rewrite it for him. He can't and can't be bothered, claiming that he tried to avert the Iraq war, that many nations trusted the flawed intelligence on WMD, that the U.S. now has better relations with foreign countries, that the Middle East is freer and more hopeful, that his tax cuts help the economy, that his predecessors are responsible for our current financial meltdown, that he has kept America safe, asterisk, uh, not counting 9-11. Frank Rich, of course, actually writes his own stuff, the op-ed columnist for the New York Times and author of The Greatest Story Ever Sold, The Decline and Fall of Truth in Bush's America. Good to see you. Thanks for coming in. Good to see you, Keith. I sense that a lot of us are a little surprised by this effort. Uh, why would we be? I mean, hasn't he, to some degree, been doing this for eight years? Well, he has been. I mean, it's been such a propagandistic presidency. Uh, you know, as as you've tirelessly pointed out, you know, major combat operations ended over five years ago in Iraq, according to his uh, knowledge of history. The thing is, I don't think anyone's listening to it. I mean, if you rewrite history in a forest and no one's there, uh, people just can't wait for him to get out. You know, that new NBC Wall Street Journal poll, what, 18 percent, 19 percent of the country is going to miss him? Yeah. That's, you know, I think uh, that's pretty bad. It would be sad in a different context. And something else about this would be wonderful in a different context. He has so exhausted everybody, I think which is the corollary of what you just mentioned. Absolutely. That, and so many are relieved that he's going. Just That's enough for people that he's able to use that as a kind of immunity against people calling him out on the lies of this last tour, which is dedicated to lying about what he's already done, including when he lied previously. <laughs> exactly. I, I, would, I would argue that the country's turned off after Katrina. When he stood in New Orleans and said everything's mm -hmm. hunky-dory, that was the end of his credibility. And, and getting with the 06 election, of course, in this last election, people just don't care. And it's futile for him to do it because history will be written by real historians. And also there's a huge documentary record of everything that's going on in this administration. And the proof is in the pudding, you know, not only about security and foreign affairs in the, in the national security mm -hmm. sense, but what about our economic security, which is collapsing and is crucial to national security. There's also another aspect in terms of how history will perceive this that I think makes this kind of self-defeating. In other words, if you spend eight years as a president making it very apparent that you don't give a damn what anybody else thinks, right. you're going to go ahead and do what you and that small gang around you says is the right thing to do. All of a sudden on the way out, you, you reveal this desperate need to control the ultimate message. I mean, the old uh, uh, is this. This is the old. There are no atheists in foxholes. Right. Sort of transmuted into a into a presidential thing, and it it just belies the whole pre the premise of this imperial presidency, doesn't it? It does, and as, it, as you said, it would be poignant in another context. It seems almost loony, but also we don't know what his sense of reality is. You know. He went to Iraq uh, to demonstrate democracy and security <laughs> there, and shoes are thrown at him, and I'm not sure that even penetrated the bubble. He looked at it as a publicity stunt for somebody. Well, if you'd almost penetrated more than the bubble, but it, <laughs> it, it, whenever you see, I mean, it does this. Is this self-correcting? Whenever you see a politician just doing the, the Stalinist trick of change what history says about you is it is it in our society still self-correcting or is there an antidote required to this i think it's self-correcting i really think the weight of information is just too great look it was even self-correcting for stalin ultimately <laughs> but you know i think of warren harding one of the worst presidents uh, in our history and in the 20th century when he died he was thought to be a hero the teapot dome scandal hadn't worked hadn't broken yet People mobbed his uh, funeral train as if he were Lincoln, and within two years he was written off as one of the worst catastrophes ever to befall the United States. Bush's sort of lame efforts in these waning weeks are just not going to have any impact on history of judgment.
But can he make it work to any degree? I mean, I'm, I'm sure he. the goal is completely come out as his, his role model in this equation, Truman, to be revivified by history, perhaps in your own lifetime. Um, but, but can he make it work at all to any degree uh, because we are such a short attention span, theater quality kind of uh, society? I, I see your point, but I think you have to have some actual achievements. Yes. <laughs> and, 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 and the only achievements here are on the negative side of the ledger. Well, and those, and those two elections, and those two elections, like he, one of which yeah, well, he, and, he and Ulysses S. Grant. I mean, they both they both got elected. They both got reelected despite corruption of, of biblical proportions. Right. Well, we'll see. I mean, it's at least I guess it's interesting to stand by the side of the road and watch this as it unfolds. Well, like a car wreck that's going much too slowly. We're passing by much too slowly. I think we want to speed it up, get on to the next. That's right. <laughs> a little of demolition derby uh, speed would be appropriate. Frank Rich, columnist of the New York Times, uh, the book, uh, The Greatest Story Ever Sold, how apropos to our discussions here. Uh, great thanks again for coming in. Thanks for having me.